Okay, let's start with Chapter 6, Sensation and Perception. I selected a grouping of pictures that sort of illustrate what's going to be happening in this chapter. Um, both sensation and perception talk about vision, hearing, touch, smell, taste. Um, but the difference between sensation and perception is that while they all deal, while they both deal with collecting information, um, perception goes one, one step farther and talks about how we understand that information. And so that's why I've got the picture at the bottom of the, um, that's a double figure. It's a figure ground illusion. Could be men walking downstairs holding hands or it could be um, arrows go pointing up and down. So um, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? So let's jump in and make that distinction between sensation and perception. Um, Okay, in sensation, the brain is going to receive information from your sensory organs. So eyes, ears, nose, so on. In perception, the brain's going to make sense out of that input. When I was an undergraduate, I took one class called sensation and another class called perception simultaneously in the same quarter. And I really have to, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this because I was a psychology major, but I could not figure out why I was getting credit for the same class twice because they were both talking about the you know visual system, hearing, taste, smell. I'm like, each week we're talking about the same thing and I really couldn't figure out what the difference was, which is a very <laughs> bad report on my behavior as an undergraduate because I should have figured it out of course, my teachers could have made it a little bit more clear that in sensation, we were just talking exactly about how the eyes function versus in perception, we were talking about how we make sense of the information coming in through our visual system. Um, here we have under sensation, information coming in from the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue, your skin. And it's literally in this part of the chapter, we're literally going to be talking about how those receptors work. In sensation, or sorry, perception, we're going to, here's a visual illusion, we're going to talk about how your brain actually makes sense of the information coming in through your eyes. So we've got one of these classic pictures where you could be able to interpret it two different ways, right? It's either what it appears to be, which is just a drawing of a woman walking in a park or something with a tree on the right. Uh, a bridge in the background and a building and so on. Or we can sort of like let our eyes go a little fuzzy and then it clearly becomes a face where the bridge is one of the eyes and the, uh, what is that, a water, no, a swing set? I don't know what's making the other eye. The woman herself becomes the nose, her fur coat becomes the nose and the hem of her skirt becomes one of his lips and the trail that she's walking on becomes his other lip. Right, it becomes very clearly a face if you sort of let your eyes go that ability for it to switch is really in the eye of the beholder, right? It's your interpretation of w what you're seeing. Um, so sensation is going to be what exactly is collected and exactly how the sense receptors work and perception is going to be how do you make sense of these little elements that are entering your brain. So making sense of the world. Um, Bottom-up processing is what we're talking about with sensation. Um, Basically, you're going to be assembling and integrating the sensory elements, the little bits of uh, light waves that come in through your eyes or sound waves that come in through your ears or little molecules that are collected by your nose or by your tongue, right? What exact, you know, the exact little elements that are being collected by your sense organs. Top-down processing is what we do with perception. We're going to be interpreting the sensory elements using maybe our pre-existing models you know, our schemas of how the world works, maybe our preconceived ideas about what we're likely to experience in this situation, our expectations about what generally comes next in a situation like that. These things all allow us to um, determine whether this is something that we've experienced before, right? So we can then label what we're experiencing or um, tie it to something we already know, things like that. So sensation is the bottom-up process and perception is the top-down process where we're going to impose from the top down meaning on what we're experiencing. So if we go back to this picture on the right, you are going to impose meaning on that picture 
whereas um, uh, with the girl on the left with all of her different receptors there, <laughs> I just love that picture. I found it on the internet. Um, we've got all these different elements coming in, but not necessarily a coherent understanding until she has imposed some meaning using perception, which is that top-down process of imposing meaning. Okay, so let me give you an example. What's on the bottle? Of course, we have a label in what appears to be French. Uh, but on the front of the bottle, we have an image. Now, most adults tend to see naked people. Kids tend to see dolphins. I've circled the dolphins to make them more obvious, because I don't know about you guys, but I'm an adult, and I see a naked woman and a man behind her, her arms up around his head, him nuzzling her and cupping her breasts, I guess we could say. Belly button in the middle on her. You can see her nipples, right? It's all very clear if you're an adult, right? If you're a kid, they don't usually see that. They go right to the dolphins because they're sweet and innocent and they don't impose nudity and fondling and so on on the picture. So I circled the different dolphins. I'll give you a second to sort of study that and you're like, oh yeah, the gray areas. There's one, um, they see eight to ten dolphins because it really depends on whether you count partial dolphins. Like on her left thigh, in my interpretation of this of the picture, you see sort of a dolphin exiting. <laughs> so all you see is his tail and part of his back. Um, so it's sort of in your interpretation of the dolphins. But once I've circled them and made it hard to see the uh, other image, the dolphins become really obvious, right? It's all in your interpretation. It, it's all in what your, what your brain is imposing on the object, your expectations, your model. Um, so that's what we're talking about with perception is that, yeah, your brain has collected these little elements of light and dark and shadow and, and lines and so on. And then you use previous existing knowledge to help you to understand what you're experiencing. Okay, so let's do this again. Here we have a nice set of black and white spots, right? What are we looking at? Now, this is a good example of why it's so important for our visual system to utilize pre-existing knowledge and expectations and so on because a lot of times the world is overexposed on a really bright sunny day. The world is overexposed and your eyes are sometimes without sunglasses on them trying to make sense of what little lights and shadows it can pick up so it can understand what it's perceiving. Um, sometimes when you take a photograph it's overexposed but yet you can still figure out what, what the picture was. Sometimes when it's foggy, things are underexposed and you still have to figure out what those shapes are. On a foggy morning, you might notice that things look weird. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, I thought that was a tree and it turned out to be something else, right? Um, that's a good example of how with incomplete sensation, we sometimes have to draw interpretations. So the bottom-up process tells us we're looking at black and white splotches. With top-down processing, we start to apply concepts like, um, okay, what is this? I'm starting to see some shapes maybe emerging. Um, maybe you might notice it up in the left-hand side there. It looks like kind of familiar tree elements, like maybe the shadow under a tree. Um, if I mention sidewalk to you, maybe you can start to see piece together where a sidewalk might be in this image. If I mention there's a dog, maybe you can start to, to see the dog emerging. If I say that it's a Dalmatian dog, that might help you even more. I've had students um, focus up in the top left corner and find the shape outline of a dog. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, if I mention that it's a Dalmatian dog and that there's a sidewalk in this picture and the shadow of a tree in this picture, stuff might start to come together for you and you start to see the parts that are, are relevant, right? Um, normally in person I'd be pointing right now. Hopefully my, you can see my mouse, but if not I'll try and verbalize it well enough. But what you see is the, the Dalmatian has his nose to the ground and his ear is sort of flopping over top of his head and then his left foreleg is extending backwards, his right foreleg is forwards and is mostly black. And then you can kind of follow his back, but you have to sort of guess where he ends and the leaf litter begins because it sort of blends together, right? Um, you can kind of see his right hind leg coming out behind him and his 
left hi hind leg is coming towards his left foreleg. Um, and you can see his little belly kind of coming up in a, um, you know, at an angle with a dark, a dark shadow to it. Um, once you see the Dalmatian, it's hard not to see the Dalmatian. Once you see the tree, it's hard not to see the tree anymore. And that's the importance of perception. Once you have an expectation, once you know what you're seeing or what you're supposed to be seeing, it becomes really obvious what you're seeing or what you're supposed to be seeing. It becomes so obvious you can't understand how, how you could not see it. Um, it's kind of like that piece I showed you earlier with the gorilla who walks through the basketball game. Once you've seen the gorilla, you can't understand how you could have ever missed the gorilla. Um, that's perception. Once you know what to expect, you impose that top-down processing and it becomes really obvious. Okay, let's go ahead and stop here. I'll come back in the next segment and talk about thresholds. While you're waiting for the um, next piece, you could go ahead and get a pencil because I'm going to ask you to tuck it behind your ear during the next segment.